Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and deal with electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody hanging out in the Discord chat room. If you'd like to join us throughout the show with any GIFs, GIFs, memes, all that is welcome. You can hit us up on the live broadcast chat room in the discord server the invite url for that is discord.gg slash adafruit so good hanging out like I with the show in a minute <laughs> hanging out with everybody in all of the chat rooms who are in the youtubes and the facebook periscope twitch and of course discord a given shout out to everybody hanging out good morning mr certainly vince yanni to wester mr certainly i think i already said mm -hmm. Uh, Blitz City Blitz DIY. City, Liz. Hello. Seeker. Uh, and everybody wired. else. <laughs> Switching to the other chat rooms. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody hanging out all over the world. Yeah, we have a fun show today. Lots of interesting demos and prototyping stuff. Um, so we'll get through the sh housekeeping in the beginning of the show. Um, and then we'll jump into uh, this week's product that we're taking a look at. We have lots of LEDs, thousands of LEDs. They're for all this, on my face right now. For this thing. Yours literally has a thousand. Mine has like uh, a Over. several thousand. <laughs> <laughs> lots of LEDs. There's so many, they're like dust. It's just everywhere. Literally. <laughs> I, know, right over I there. thought that it's was like, dust. I that know, was cleaning up. So Let's go ahead and jump into the show. Starting off with the housekeeping. Okay, here we go. Um, if you head over to the Adafruit slash free, you can find out all the different tiers this week. We have pretty similar from last week. Let me run through those real quick, make it bigger. For orders, if you spend $99 or more with Adafruit, you're going to get a free half size from a proto. If you spend $149 or more, you get the half size proto, from a proto plus a randomly selected Stemma QT breakout board. If you have an account with Adafruit, we'll make sure you don't get the same one twice. And for orders that are $200 more, you get that Stemma QT breakout, the half size Puma Proto, and free shipping for ground continental US only. So check out adafruit.com slash free for all the deets. Help is wanted. Go to jobs.adafruit.com if you want to see all the listings that are available. If you're a maker in, in the, the market for a maker gig in this gig economy, check it out at uh, jobs.adafruit.com. This week, the latest posting I'm seeing here is a PS4 to PS5 custom controller mod. And this was posted by Happy Cat Productions. It's a freelance gig, so check that one out. And that was published earlier in this month. Lots of other excellent ones as well, so check those out if you are in the market for a new gig. Or if you have a project and you want some makers to help you out with it, you can post it up for free. That's jobs.adafruit.com. Okay, this is a fun one. Ah, we're inside this little computer. Shout out to the new, new newsletter. This is a once a week newsletter. It's a great way to get all of the latest products that are added in the Adafruit shop in your inbox. So that's really cool. How's my audio? Is it okay? It looks low. <laughs> I gotta say it looks low. You're good. You're good? Okay, it just looks low on my end, huh? It's like the look how low it is. It's like it's normally this much. Why is it so low? I don't know. Do I need to speak louder? Last week's live stream was quite a <laughs> endeavor on setting it up. Anyway, this is what it sounded like. Um, let's go to the next. Adafruit Daily. If you want daily content from Adafruit, go to adafruitdaily.com and you can uh, subscribe to all the different categories of goodness such as 3d printing python on microcontrollers maker business biohacking and more so check that out adafruitdaily.com make sure you won't we won't spam you we promise 
Um, shout out to all the 9,000 folks who have subscribed to the Python on Microcontroller newsletter. If you have a Python related project, you can get it featured on the newsletter. Just email um, cpnews at adafruit.com. Shout out to Paul Cutler for hosting the Circuit Python Show podcast. It's a great opportunity to hear awesome people that are working on Circuit Python or working with Circuit Python. Um, you can check it out in all of the uh, podcast services just by searching for Circuit Python Show. So a huge shout out to Paul Cutler for doing that one. And I think that is what we got, All right. Here's the team. I don't know why I clicked on that photo, but it's great. It's, we're hanging out. Um, sorry, I'm trying to, okay. No, wrong one. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. We got some gonk droids by Yanni. Thank you, Yanni, for sharing that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this? this work, to this week's pretty awesome updated product. You heard the audio, right? We're good? Mm -hmm. OK. Why is it so look, look how small it is there. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive me nuts. I'm going to just turn that off, and then we won't have to look at it anymore. There we go. That's scary, because now I don't know if we have any audio. I'm listening. OK. <clears throat> I appreciate you listening. Can you folks hear that? <laughs> we're good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well this week we're taking a look at the new ESP32 uh, V2. I almost said that the wrong way, but I caught myself. There's so many different variations of it. There this sure one is. is a really good one for running MicroPython. Uh, nice look off. Sure, my favorite thing is honestly Whippersnapper. Um, Whippersnapper is Adafruit's easiest way to get IoT projects going. <laughs> uh, so this is the new ESP32 V2, and some of the additions is it's got the uh, the Pico Mini 2, which is this little guy has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. It's a small package, so there's a lot of room here for the mounting hole. So I have it uh, mounted to our little 3D printed Lego stomach. Um, break uh, mount. It, it supports Lego studs, so you can make a, a, a fun, quick project with uh, with just kind of moving these around, uh, sticking them around. Um, so I have a, a Stemma QT sensor here. This is the AH ATH uh, twenty uh, temperature humidity sensor. And what's great about it is you can just plug and play different Stemma sensors now. The version one of this ESP. 32 Huzzah board uh, did not have a stomach connector. So this time around with the smaller package, it now has uh, all that room for awesome things like more RAM, your stomach QT, and even a little NeoPixel and an extra button here. This is a software button that you can play with. Um, but yeah, you get all of the uh, the pinouts here. I'm going to take this off. Uh, mounting holes is, a, is awesome because you couldn't, you didn't have them sort of on V1. You know it's V2 because it says V2 in the background. Lovely silk screen, um, either by uh, Lamar and or Phil B. And yeah, it's a great little uh, piece of kit. It's a really nice feather that does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, so we will take a look at setting it up on Whippersnapper. Whippersnapper is free. It's in beta right now, but it's definitely usable, so check it out at io.adafruit.com. Here I have our ESP32 V2 dashboard and whippersnapper. I have set it up, and in your whippersnapper dashboard, you get uh, a glance at all of the hardware that you have kind of played around with. And what I want to note here is that each board you can see exactly what beta number it's on which is super cool you can see they're all offline because they're normally battery powered or plugged into the wall so i don't have them online but you can see here the 32 is online that's awesome and you can see uh, it's at a date so i'm gonna go ahead and click on it and update it so if you want to update your your um, hardware maybe you were playing around with uh whipper snapper a few months ago it seems like we got betas like every week maybe um, so to update it, we're going to go to device settings and here you can change the name of it. You get an idea of what it looks like. I'm just going to click update and we're going to update it live and hopefully it works. 
If not, we will report the bug. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe I should have uh, tried this before the show. <laughs> I think it's updating. I don't have a clue as to what it's doing, if, it, if it's doing it or not. Anything? Maybe it's a Safari thing. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is in beta. <laughs> um, but uh, what's cool is that right away, you can start playing around with some of the things. It's got a built-in LED, and uh, you can add all of these components to it if you want to start playing around with different sensors and uh, components. Uh, right now, we have a handful of Stemma QT breakouts. Here you can see the AHT, a BME280, and a couple other ones. Um, and we also have a learn guide on adding your own. So if you want to add your own, you can uh, follow through Brent's learn guide and create your own um, uh, component if you want. I'd really like to get the battery monitor on here so that I can find out exactly what my battery level is because uh, I'm always afraid that the battery is going to die. So uh, it'd be cool to have this hooked up to the battery gauge, um, the battery monitor, stomach connector, and then have a sensor tied to that so you can kind of monitor the thing. I haven't walked through it, um, but it's definitely able to do so over here uh, in the I I squared C component page, it walks you through installing or setting up your own um, your own uh, your own component in Whipper Snapper. There's also a dedicated Whipper Snapper guide that you can follow along with if you want to uh, see what's supported and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's a quick look at uh, at the stuff. I have a dashboard as well that I've created. This just gives you a visual indicator of like plotting the the uh, humidity and temperature. In a little in a little pie graph thing, not a pie graph, but a line graph. You can see here over time, it's it's um, tracking it every minute or so, every five minutes, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can uh, update if you want to pull it every ten minutes or whatever. You can change that here every couple hours or so. Yeah, I really like the HT temperature sensor. It seems to work with just about all of the boards. Um, so, yeah. So that's a quick look at the ESP32 V2. Um, if you got yourself one, definitely check out Whippersnapper. I recommend uh, trying it out. It's uh, it's really fun and easy to kind of start plotting data in like a few minutes. A quick question from Vince asking how uh, stable are these Wi-Fi boards over a long period of time? It's been using the uh, ATC Wink 1500, uh, but would love to try something more affordable. Yeah, sure. I, they're pretty robust. Um, I have here an air quality sensor that's been on for, I don't know, a couple years now. Since we released the project? It's out, yeah, it's outside in the front of our house, and it's just been on for, I, I don't know how long. <laughs> it's been on at for At least two years or more. Yeah, I need to take a look at it though because it's just sitting out there but I think this is the latest data um a while depending on your wi-fi router and stuff our router goes down up and up and down so it might be offline right now but uh yeah this this is kind of a testament to like yeah it's it's pretty robust um and this is actually the ESP32 v1 I believe um let me do a quick look in the learn guides and see uh what that was do you remember the name of that Air quality sensor. There it is. Air quality sensor, 3D printed enclosure. What's the? Uh, oh, it's the. Okay, so we used an M4 and the ESP32 uh, Wi-Fi coprocessor. So that's like an add-on if you want to add on. Um, it's f not the same chip. It is the ESP32, but it's not the the B2. Pico module like it is here. So I don't think this one does Bluetooth. Um, but yeah, this is another option. If you already have a microcontroller like the M4, the M0, this is a good way to kind of get that, just kind of add on Wi-Fi. And you can see this module is bigger here. It's the uh, VW Room 32. And speaking of the Pico it's module, been running pretty good this whole time. Um, yeah, we have it running with uh, uh, the the BME 280 or 680 and the uh, the. Uh, 
uh, the air quality breakout, the uh, the PMSA 003i. It's a nice uh, air quality sensor. Yeah. Anyway, what's up? Is that, is that good? <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a look at the uh, Pico module, the 3D models for it. Yeah, so uh, uh, as a part of the new board, we tend to make a 3D model of the PCB itself. So here it is. Here's the learn guide for the ESP32 V2 Feather. All the lovely documentation that you have grown to accustomed to. Under the downloads, you can see the schematic and a screenshot of of the uh, the PCB and Eagle. And really, what you can do here is find out exactly what the data sheet is for the, any given module. In this in this instance, it's the uh, the the Pico Mini O2. So I was able to pull this up, and here's you know two different flavors of it. So I know it's this module, the ESP Pico Mini O2. So what I recommend, if you were making a 3D model uh, for your component, for your board, um, definitely check out DigiKey. DigiKey, I searched for the ESP32 Pico Mini O2, and here it is. There is no photo for it, but there is a data sheet, it's a PDF, you can check that out. But my favorite thing about DigiKey, you scroll down here, under documents and media, 90% of the time your components have a link to a CAD model. So here is a link to a step file, that's a 3D model format from Snap EDA. So here it is Snap EDA, it's a website that creates a bunch of 3D models and footprints. So if you wanted to make, an, if you wanted to spin up a new board and you didn't have the footprint, and you didn't want to draw it for three hours, you can just download it from um, Snap EDA. So I have an account, um, it's free to do so, and then they have these models here. You can kind of revolve around and just get an idea. Like, yeah, that's the right package. That is definitely the right one. Um, all the footprints are there. So I download it as a step model, and uh, I'm gonna start modeling it. Um, you can grab the Eagle CAD file um, that's linked here. So under the downloads, page under files you can see here there is a pcb file on github so i will download this open it in eagle and use the fusion 360 convert thing it just kind of spits it out so the 3d model and then i can map all the components um yeah and i will be using the component from snap eda so that's just a look at uh what i'm gonna do today <laughs> yeah but yeah, the mounting holes for the feather are pretty standard and it just worked out of the box with this one. Uh, prior to this one, I think I had a, a, peak, um, a feather RP2040 in here and it has kind of the same mounting holes. So that's, that's another awesome thing about feather ecosystem. If you already have a 3D printed thing or a project that has mounting holes for the feather, your, your ESP32 V2 will just, will just fit. How about that? Yeah, and I can... Uh, be confident to disconnect this because it's um, battery powered here. So there you go. Cool. So sign up to get notified when these are back in stock. We had a short stock of them, um, but we're working on getting more. And this is kind of expressive. Shout out to expressive. They're kind of the only chip you can get right now. They're expressive in the RP2040s. <laughs> Should be coming back soon. So make sure to sign up on the product page. Put the link to that, it's a PID 5400. There you go. And I think that's it for this week's cool look at new product. Yay, hope y'all like it. Woohoo, should be cool. All right, let's go ahead and jump to this week's prototyping. This week we have an update to that little connection machine we've been working on with Phil B. This is one of those iconic giant computers when we were like mainframe back in the, what, 82 is when it came out? Made popular on lots of films, one of them being Jurassic Park. It's featured in the back, and here is Lamar and Phil. I think Anne was there too when they checked out the uh, museum of, what is it, the MoMA? At yeah, the in MoMA New Museum in New York. Yeah, you can see how big it is there. Lamar for scale, and you can see that the LED matrices on the back are displaying like uh, system load and, um, Beyond that, Phil B is going to add some cool audio visualizers and some of the animations that we're seeing in the uh, Jurassic Park clips. 
So a nice little smooth animation. I'd go up to the bigger one since it's so big. Since it's so big. <laughs> Fits right in the palm of your hand. This is, of course, fully 3D printed. It's in three parts. We've got your front, your back, and your bottom. It is being powered by a Raspberry Pi. A little bit overpowered, but uh, Philby is going to work on a uh, one that'll work on a microcontroller if all you're going to do is uh, display the matrices. You can see on the inside here where the Pi is mounted and how all of the cables are all connected and uh, running on a couple of the headers down there. Nice and removable. Little back panels here with ample amount of um, ventilation since a lot of the, uh, like the detail here, these cool little triangular vents were supposed to like bring in the air and then like push it out through the top. So got all these vents all over the place and then even on the bottom here Yay. to uh, make sure the, your pie is nice and cool you also have a bunch of mounting options on the inside so you can add an additional fan and uh, where am i right there so we can add brackets to uh, add the fan and like sort of do some circulation inside there of course the um, front here you can see how we're using the black led acrylic to have that nice hey, diffusion effect on the matrices. So we're using the Charlie Pro, uh, Charlie Plex um, matrices, or it is a yeah, loose one. They're nine by 17, yeah, nine yeah. By 16, something like that. So you have the LEDs and then the driver backpack on the back there. These connect together and just press fit onto the front there. And the um, acrylic, black LED acrylic just slides right in like that. Give you that nice little diffused look. And what else can I say about this? Really nice uh, Octoprint case is what I'm going to use this as. And the microphone that uh, Philby is going to use is just a little USB one that plugs into the back so you can do the audio visualization. Yeah. Yeah, so there's going to be a couple of different demos. Right now, I think this is showing the activity of the Pi. Is that, mm -hmm. is that right? I think it's like fake activity, but okay. he's going to actually get some system load info in there. That's cool. All right. Yeah, so all of these are daisy chained together with I squared C. Um, yeah, so just uh, zero clock and zero data, two mm -hmm. data lines, uh, voltage and ground. They plug into what? Just the headers on the Pi? Yeah, it's just plugged into the headers, okay. and then uh, you're doing some addressing for each matrices. On okay. the back here, we'll show it in more detail next, or actually, yeah, next week. Uh, the the way that they're soldered to show which address each of the matrices. Yeah, that's what's great about I squared C. You can assign different address buses and then have just eight of them all octo over here. So you have eight of these matrices all going yeah. together. Um, that's over a thousand <laughs> RGB or just regular uh, LEDs. These are just regular LEDs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can choose the colors and whatnot. You can't change the colors. <laughs> Because the LED is the color. They are not. not the LEDs. They are just not NeoPixel. Yeah, not NeoPixel. So. I will pull up the, you know, just the product page uh, for the Charlie Plexus. Um, I think we do have a couple Charlie. of yeah. those in stock. If you want to start building this guy. Yeah, you can see the need. red ones are in stock. You do need the, the thing in the backpack mm -hmm. to drive it because it's just a board for just having the LEDs. There's no actual circuitry on it other than the traces for the LEDs. But you need to power this, you need to drive this with something, and the driver is over here, this guy. 16 by 9, yeah, PWM LED matrix driver using the ISFL, IS31FL3731. <laughs> Love that one. But yeah, you can do all sorts of fun things, and we have used this uh, backpack before. If you remember a couple of years ago, we came up with this. Oh, Pedro has adorably it. cute little pet. Yeah, uh, so computer. making mini com mi mini retro computers is a thing. We love doing it. This is our first one. I don't know, five years ago, let's say, a little three D printed thing. Just one of these backpacks. I think it's a feather, and uh, fake keys. Two mm -hmm. uh, D printed thing that's already like the stickers already peeling. But it's a great little project. Awesome Arduino code from Phil B. I like how you put on there, it's running the uh, Feather M0. <laughs> right, so it's actually running an older, yeah, the, the Atmel Sandy 50. Focus. I can't ah. focus. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's using very similar, instead of red, it's green. Mm -hmm. it's, it can do Game of Life and some text and other things. We've got a nice Adafruit GFX library runs with it for Arduino. Um, and we also have a certain Python. Uh, driver as well, but this is all done in Arduino because we didn't really have CircuitPython back in the day. 
mounted but about yeah. the exact same way with the little nubbins. Oh, really? That's with the cool. standoffs on the back there yeah. because you can't really get the screws in there once you attach the backpack. So everything is fully removable, completely modular. So if you wanted to swap these out for different uh, matrix C color, you could do that. Or if you just want to do away with it, have the case be something completely else. Uh, yeah, plenty of room for a ton. My favorite pie case so far. Yeah. <laughs> such a cool pie case. All right, definitely gonna keep this around. Mm -hmm. uh, if not an octoprint case, uh, at least with the, uh, uh, when he moves this over to uh, CircuitPython on one of the feathers or a Pico, definitely have this as a nice little display, like uh, our cool little LED matrices in the background there. Yeah, so this is the website um, for MoMA.org. This um, installation is called Thinking Machines. Um, this is the CM2, right? This is the model. They had a CM1, 2, 3, and I think all the way up to 5. Yeah. The 1 and 2 were similar. I think it's just sure. like uh, specifications. And I thought this was actually a real thing. This is actually a replica. I did not know. Where does it say that? Oh. Um, oh. Where does it say replica? There's a link in Slack. Uh, Did you see that in random? No. I can pull it out real quick. Just bear with me, folks, please. Is that being shown? Yeah, here it is. Uh, Blinken Labs is the company that like worked on the rep of making it, of making the replication. Replica lights for the CM2. Oh. And they have a picture here of an Arduino. Oh, look at that. And how it actually looks like. These are look like bare LEDs. Huh. And they maybe wrote some software to do, I don't know, heat stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that a team C? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was the real bones? thing. I did too. <laughs> I, so check out this video as well. Um, maybe I'll put a link to it. Um, yeah, let me just link to like this whole oh, come on, of this whole page, and folks can get an insight. I would love to, next time in New York. I definitely want to see this if it's still around. That'd be great. But this is a great interview with uh, one of the consultants, uh, Gordon Bruce, um, who worked on the project. Yeah, and they they have some fun. Uh, nice little discussion yeah. on the design process. Mm -hmm. They have like some all of the, the terminology. Like, what was it called the what was it the belt the waist belt or something. Remember. <laughs> yeah. But I added all that detail in there since Philby did have that in the uh, base camp. Yeah. All the detail that needed to be in there. And it was a nice little challenge on figure out how to get everything to go. Yeah. Use some support materials, but it turned out phenomenal. I'm really happy yeah. with the way the uh, quality of the print came out on this. I'm just going to open base camp and start poking around at some oh, of the no, videos. No, we could do that, that next week. <laughs> um, just in case that next week, you know, we don't do the show or something. Uh, let's see. Let's Alman see. Uh, Chattery on the Facebook is asking, "Can we buy this? Which yeah. which this are we talking about? Yeah. You can get all the parts. There we go." <laughs> This is a uh, oh, yeah, sneak yeah. peek of the audio uh, visualizer code that uh, Phil B's working on here. So and he posted a really cool no, demo on uh, Twitter as well. So here in Jurassic Park, um, the first one, you can see where it was. Uh, it's basically in every kind of hacker scene. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't remember. You know, I'd yeah, as a kid watching this, I don't remember ever seeing those in the background because they didn't, I don't remember them prominently like being next to the right. screens. It was always in the background. But yeah, I like that, uh, the way that like every other two rows are like moving in opposite directions. It looks like Did you spinning. film this with your phone? And yeah. <laughs> you're watching like on your laptop on HBO, uh, HBO Max. Yeah, I was great rewatching it too and knowing what to look for. Just like, oh, it's in that scene. Oh, it's in that scene mm -hmm. too. It's great. It's such a visual thing to get all this nice bokeh in the background of the shot. It's yeah. really, really cool. Not cool. That'll be uh, next week's super cool little pie case. Super cool little pie case. <laughs> the uh, little connection machine. CM connection machine. CM1 slash CO2. Not cool. And that's what we're probably doing. Uh, I think you have something too? Yeah, I do have something too. Um, cool. So let's... Uh, so we have cubes this this time around, lots of cubes. I've been working on a 
a 3D RGB matrix cube. This is it. Um, we're gonna have two versions of it. it there's a uh, bigger pitch for these 64 by 64 RGB matri matrices. Inside here, it's, it's kind of hard to, to show everything right now, but Raspberry Pi is in there and a matrix bonnet. These are six RGB matrices panels. Um, what we came up with is a system of oh, lining up all of these frames. So all of these frames will be attached to each of the RGB matrices. Um, they get mounted with these corner uh, mounting holes and each side has these lettered tabs. And the idea is that you link up, you just match up the letters and with these magnets and alternating tabs, they just kind of snap into each other. Uh, so uh, it took us a minute to figure this out because we only want this cube to be assembled one way um, because the in mapping. the code, mapping all the orientations is quite difficult. Um, so this is one version of it. The second version is the RGB matrix that's just bigger. Um, it's a 2.5 millimeter pitch. This one is the two millimeter pitch. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, plug it in. Uh, the way we have everything powered is through a five volt, three amp, uh, 10,000 milliamp LiPo battery. It's huge, it does three amps. The Pi 4 needs three amps. So if you're gonna try this with any other battery, make sure it can do three amps. So the RGB matrix bonnet has to be powered separately, but this battery is beefy enough to power. As you can see, I have two USB ports, one for the Pi, it's going into the USB-C port. And this uh, USB port here is going into the uh, 2.1 millimeter barrel jack on the bonnet. Um, we have kind of shortened out these power cables and are using uh, these screw block terminals to uh, share all the power and bus, but this this all needs to be um, daisy chained correctly. All right, so I just went ahead and snapped it down. I'm gonna run um, the globe demo. So I, I'm gonna SSH, SSH into the Pi and launch, launch the demo in just a moment here. Let me do that again. Okay, so I'm gonna CD into <laughs> into the thing and then run it and here we are. So this is a great demo from Phil B. Phil B's doing all the code and he needed to come up with a way to test the orientation of all the panels and make sure that everything is mapped properly. So this is an animated globe. It's spanning across six of these different panels. I think we need to go to the yeah, sure. main. There you go. So there it is. It's about 133 millimeters. Um, big. And it's kind of heavy. <laughs> it's it's very heavy, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's drawing a lot of power and a lot of current. That's why we needed a battery that can, a beefy battery that can do three amps because the Pi 4 is power hungry. Um, it gets hot as well. It's getting warm. Um, so we might put a heat sink in there. Um, I've only run it for about 30 minutes, so we'll see uh, what's the total time. But it's cool that, uh, you know, when you want to uh, take it apart, you can just take off this bit here and, you know, shut it down. But yeah, it's cool to see the uh, the map um, kind of animate across three of these uh, panels. So imagine if we had a texture map of a human head, it'd be really creepy and all that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me run another demo just because I can. Uh, the life demo. Let's see if I can run life. Yeah, so this is the uh, Conway's game of life. It's got a couple of different um, colors, and the real impressive thing is that the the uh, cells are span spanning across. Well, sometimes it's hard to. I don't know why they all kind of disappeared. It like stopped working. <laughs> Demos. Yeah, I think I killed it. Let me run it again. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to look at it. But you can see how the cells are going across the panels there. And really the last demo is to show sand, the sand demo, pixel dust, um, showing 
you know, there's an accelerometer in there as well, I forgot to mention, but that that's really just for the sand demo. Well, we've done a sand demos before with the RGB matrices, and Lamar has always wanted a cube. And uh, boy, is the cube difficult. <laughs> Mainly on the assembly front. I'm going to stick with the uh, the globe. It just, it's just the best demo for it. Um, Antarctica. Where's Antarctica? There it is. <laughs> Spinning around. Real quick question from Mr. Cern. Like Bruce is asking, did you look at the Snap Action 5 wire block connectors on the shop? PID 874. So I need more than, ah. uh, I need more than, what is that, five? That only gives me four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we needed the power. The rail we have is in the shop. Do you want to pull it up? Oh. I think just call it um, power rail. This one was recommended by Phil B. Um, it's a nice chonky one. There's a power bus. Yeah, these guys. Mm. These are great. Um, they're super chonky. Um, they hold a lot of current and they have just the right amount of pins, seven of them, right? Hmm. Uh, for me to do it. So that's how I'm, how I'm doing it. It comes with screws and all that and it has mounting tabs. But as you saw inside the cube, there really isn't a, a spot to mount it, so it's just kind of free floating in there. But this is the power bus I use. This is real cheap. It's like two dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, they're cheap. But uh, they're they're great for these thick wires that uh, each uh, panel comes with a power cable and an IDE data cable. Hmm. The power cables are uh, kind of chunky, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're literally like this thick. So wow. yeah. Hey, look, there's a cube from a few decades ago <laughs> that's a great one too mm -hmm. um yeah so any other questions just comments chonk is important <laughs> yeah and that looks beautiful thank you yeah the bigger one is uh and you want to hold this up while i hold this one up oh my god yeah the how, difference is uh, i haven't held that one how much heavier is that well there's nothing in it yet oh. it's already heavier <laughs> But yeah, this is the uh, 2.5 millimeter pitch. That um, one's two millimeter pitch. So you can see it's not that much bigger, but yeah. It has the same kind of principle of, of having snap tabs, but it's a little bit different. These have curb cut frames. They're mm. at a 45 degree angle, which allows the assembly to be much easier. Oh yeah. Much easier. You can see inside there, uh, we have our 3D printed bracket for our Raspberry Pi. Same thing with magnets that just comes out. The accelerometer goes in the middle here. So you can see these four standoffs and there's just magnets there. There you go. And then uh, these corner brackets here are uh, all secured with screws because you have these really nice heat inserts embedded inside the frame, the curb cut frame. Um, for the smaller, like I said, we had to recreate the frame um, so that was vastly diff more difficult than this version. Um, I think though the smaller the panel, the more expensive it is. So you know, it's one of these very costly builds yeah. that kind of just shows that you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's uh, I think two weeks out, three weeks out. Nice little yeah. flex video. Very cool. Yeah, so that's what we're prototyping. It's nice and warm now. Mm. You got the whole world in your hands. <laughs> I'll be gentle with it. <laughs> Yanni says, looks like Lego. <laughs> <laughs> and to Wester, it, so the world, or so the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, flat, but in three dimensions. <laughs> Cuboid. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a cool demo that uh, Yanni posted in the Discord. That is cool, yeah. That's we'll sweet. That <laughs> wow. I looked up. We yeah. To check out Discord at discord.gg slash Adafruit to check out all these sweet memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I had this as a Minecraft block, which looked really cool. I also played around with uh, the portal cube. 3D Tetris, yes. 3D Tetris would be cool, yeah. But remember, the accelerometer, so it'd be cool to do some sort of uh, accelerometer yeah. funness. Oh, yeah, and then uh, Mr. Foamy Guy is saying that, uh, yeah, it's great for the manufacturers to realize these are likely to be used by people wanting to make cubes and angle the frames and make it easier, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit tricky to get these overseas with everything going on, but yeah, uh, Lamar it managed to snag a couple. To really get them, yeah. yeah, they were like on the boat, stuck on the boat. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, Andy Calloway coming in with the uh, important questions. Where's the 3D party parrot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great idea. You must. Okay. All right. Um, so that's what's being prototyped. Yeah, it was a big prototype segment this time around. Sweet. All right, we're ready to jump into... Let's go ahead and check out this week's Community Makes. All right. This week is an awesome... I like the design of this sweet little wearable. It is a dragon hairpin. Look at this thing. It's so cool. This was supposed to be released during Halloween, but uh, not enough. There are too many Halloween projects, so That's got fun. pushed back. <laughs> So as we're seeing here, I did have to do some chopping up of the model, uh, mostly just slicing it in half so it doesn't fall over and getting all those nice little details in the horn. Same thing with the sword, I just chopped it in half so I wouldn't have to print it straight up. Uh, you could do a little work with like welding and then like sanding it all down if you want to get rid of that uh, very visible uh, jointing line there. But for the most part, it looks really good. It looks like how smooth it is. And yeah, it's a really cool dragon hair pin to go along with your cosplay. It's supposed to be like a skull for the dragon. And again, I did chop it up right here just so it would print vertically and have some nice smooth details here on the horns. And here's the sword. It goes right into the eye here to hold up your hair. And this is just chopped right in the middle down the center here. So it just prints flat so I don't have to print this one vertically um, because of the T right here. Although I guess I could have chopped off the um, the handle and printed it upwards to get that uh, nice um, detail of the little um, or that crystal uh, pommel pommel. Uh, but if, but for the most part, uh, yeah, prints super well. Really happy with the way the uh, quality of this came out. Cool. Always an excellent technique to take a model, split it somewhere where it makes sense, and uh, avoid some support material. Gives you a flat surface to do to the bed. Mm -hmm. Um, as excellent. you can see in the uh, time lapse, it did fail, and I did try printing it upwards, like cutting off the little beak here, oh, yeah. and printing it up. But uh, yeah. even with the uh, Z hop, it kept hitting when it gets down to the top here. I mean, this is uh, pretty complex, complex up here. Mm -hmm. As you start uh, getting up to the horn, so cool. uh, nice little way to uh, have a larger um, surface area on the bed with this instead of having this little tiny area yeah. down here. Mm -hmm. This so. is by Angry Ant Eater on, on Thingiverse. So Angry Ant Eater Thingiverse Correct. user posted that up. So if you want to, it's a it's a remix from a skull hair pen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've posted this one before on the blog or did a video of it, but I think uh, that is Angry. Uh, I thought it was Antler. <laughs> nope, Ant Eater <laughs> bubble. Very cool. And the original model is uh, like this. You can see. So you can split that in the middle. What'd you use to split it? Uh, uh, Prusa Slicer. Mm. Can't do that in Cura, huh? Uh, not the way this slices it. Okay. Almost looks like there's a little cut there waiting to be cut. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, shout out to Angry Antler. Ang <laughs> Angry Ant Eater. For posting mm -hmm. this up as a free download. Yes, I do not believe this is TSA approved. <laughs> Even with this, uh, the soft, I think you could might be able to cut with the oh, edges here. Oh, that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're with this, probably, uh -huh. know, maybe. It doesn't look real. Yeah, you might have to leave behind the sword. Nah, and then uh, Rolves is asking the amps that the cube is using. I think you said uh, three. Yeah, the battery is a five volt, three amps. It's yeah. uh a nice battery you can get it on amazon just search for five volt three amps yeah we did 10,000 milliamp we there's only one that i found there's probably more but uh yeah um all of the batteries in the shop um will not work because they do not go yeah to three amps they only they stop at two amps yep we tested oh yeah i did it did not work <laughs> I uh, risked uh, burning out my pie, which is a very bad thing to do right now. So hang on to those pies. Or have a backup SD card ready to go. When you're well, when your pie is bored completely, oh, yeah. what do you do when you've shorted the power? Yeah. Th thankfully, I didn't short the power. 
All right, and I think that's it for this week's community makes. That makes this. Yeah, week. we don't have any makes this week, All so right, that's cool. great. Um, shout out to everybody who's uh, doing it up. All right, probably um, still on the beds as we speak, getting printed out. Yeah, so uh, that's gonna do it for the show, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. But don't go anywhere the rest of the day. Later on tonight. Yeah. Show and tell. Yeah, we invite you to come on to show and tell. Everybody's welcome to come on. We'll drop a link to the stream yard in the Discord chat room. So you want to participate? Come in about five minutes, ten minutes early. It's around seven twenty p.m. Eastern time, and then it goes live at seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. This week, hosted by, I believe, Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. Unless something else comes up, mm -hmm. and then immediately right after that is Ask an Engineer at eight p.m. ET. Going to take a look at all the cool new products coming out, new projects, and. Uh, course what is in secret vault cool things are being worked on yeah jp is off this week he'll return next week yeah but uh typically every thursday at 4 p.m eastern time check out uh what's going on with jp on fridays we have a uh, deep dive with tim every friday at 2 p.m specific pacific pacific or <laughs> 5 p.m eastern on sundays we have from the desk of Lady Ada. Let's check that out. We get uh, the great search with DigiKey. And then Mondays is the CircuitPython meetings. You can hang out with the CircuitPython dev, devs and community, find out what they're working on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Tuesdays is JP's product pick of the week. I believe he's back, right, next week. Check out the, um, the blog posts and whatnot. That's how you'll know. Um, I think he actually What's comes back on? the week after, yeah. yeah. But, but typically every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific or 4 p.m. Eastern. You got it. Yeah. We do this show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, yes, yeah. but we'll be on the show and tell tonight. We got a uh, foot pedal we might show off from last week. Mm -hmm. um, and just probably preview these guys again yeah preview some of the maybe cues. there'll be some more code that phil b's working on that we can show off so definitely tune yeah, in good. and sign up show us what you're working on yeah it's gonna be it for this week yeah thanks everybody so much good luck on your maker endeavors and thanks, don't yeah. forget to make, make a, a great, great day. day bye folks see you later we'll tonight, tonight. Wee. Uh -huh.